training and business consulting is worth billions and people invest their time and money into solutions that they hope will help them succeed. However, sourcing quality training is like sifting through Groupon or Amazon. There are some great products and there are some total shams. So how do you decide what is going to have the best results? Maybe it's time for an evidence-based approach to learning and development. Ahoy, Peter here from Brighter Training and today I'm talking about the need for an evidence-based framework to help define the difference between genuine education and general facilitation. I work in professional development and training. I'm passionate about what I do. I have decades of experience across a broad range of industries and I have multiple advanced degrees in business, psychology, HR and educational neuroscience. I invest in modern research, I'm accountable for the results I produce, and I believe in the importance of training for individual, team, and organization success. Now I don't tell you this to show off, I raise this because I believe that training is a specialty, and when you take money for a service, and provide a service which impacts people's emotions, brains, and overall life experience, then there should be a clear and high standard set. And my industry is sometimes really quite embarrassing. The quality is inconsistent at best. There are some amazing talented educators and there are a whole lot of hacks in it for the ego and just to make money. Now sadly anyone can purchase a license to run a program. Anyone can do a one day accreditation and claim to be an expert. In fact you don't even technically need a qualification in training to be a trainer, let alone qualifications in other fields. And yet we have people out there advising on everything from business operations and team building and even complex psychological traumas, challenges and relationships. I believe the training industry should be better regulated. I believe that the quality of the work and the outcomes should be measurable. And I believe that people who facilitate the sessions should be able to justify and be accountable for the results by providing clear evidence as to the program design and the value and their own experience and qualifications to offer advice. In other words, an evidence-based training framework. So what's the problem? Now, professional development and training, as I said, is a multi-billion dollar global industry. And training is essential. It's to ensure competency, safety, compliance, culture improvement, risk reduction, uh, engagement, succession planning, growth strategies, market reactivity, that the list goes on. But most content is forgotten. Upward of 90% is forgotten within a week. Now there are outliers, however, that's usually because an individual has a specific drive or the content triggered a really major shift. Most people who attend don't remember, they don't apply the content, and they don't change their behaviours. And therefore the underlying problems or the reasons for the training in the first place continue to persist. Now change happens within the company, or life happens and then the content's never applied, and my experience shows that most people mistake exposure to a concept to being the same as competency or expertise. Attending a training course in leadership doesn't make you a leader any more than watching Grey's Anatomy makes you a doctor. There are a million training providers who all claim their programs are amazing and it's hard to know where to look because everyone claims the same things. And it all seems right. And sadly, most people's experience with trainers is pretty average, so they think that that's the standard. And it shouldn't be. But how do we address this? We look at why it doesn't work and what consultants should be able to demonstrate and explain if they want to take your money and work as part of your team. So why doesn't the training work? First of all, people don't want to do it. The people who attend are usually forced to attend, and where people actually want to do it, they're buying into a form of false hope syndrome, where they want to believe what's on the label that the program will help them connect or feel better or be confident or understand their colleagues and loved ones or get promoted. However, there is no model that applies to everyone. And especially when it comes to interpersonal skills, there are a huge number of variables that come into play. Now, unless the programs and facilitators are specialized enough to teach this, then it's just marketing. 
Usually the training isn't based on a diagnosed need, it's a, a training company coming in with a ready-made program that they attempt to retrofit in an organization, but with no evidence, science, or direct experience in the industry and the roles in which it's to be applied. And training is seen as a fix, when the problem is actually leadership, or process, or culture, or policy, or a bunch of other things. Another problem is that training is provided as a one-time event. It doesn't matter how interesting or fun it is, a single program with no follow-up, no formal integration plan, and no consideration of the individual psychology and neurology, and no support will not result in a change. It will result in the, oh yeah, we did that program, and at best, yeah, it was fun. But it's a team-building, feel-good session disguised as skill development. Learning is about memorizing content and applying it unconsciously. It's about behavioral change and about something useful and applicable. And it's long term, and it should lead to a skill that can be done without thinking. So keep that in mind. So why are most training courses ineffective? First of all, they focus on content only. There's no specific plan for the design, the content, and the delivery. I have a whole video on this, however. In summary, for learning to take place, the brain needs to change. And for that to happen, we need repetition and time and targeted activities and a positive environment. There are three levels to address to, to achieve actual learning. So the neurology, so what the brain needs, then we've got the psychology, so how we interpret and understand the content. And then we've got the behavior, so what we do as a result. And if a program doesn't address all three, then it's unlikely to work. Now secondly, they don't work because there's often no diagnosis of the problem. So the content is actually irrelevant. So what is the behavior that needs to change? What is the desired measurable result? What is the key performance indicators which will show progress? Why is training the solution in the first place? Now thirdly, there's no change management overlay and no long-term integration. Again, learning is a process and not an event. So training courses which are single events and have no advice or long-term integration plan based on diagnosis and psychology are just team building events, they're not training. Now fourth, there's no consideration of the psychological and neurological drivers of learning. And fifth, the facilitators don't have the relevant qualifications or experience. So if they're taking your money and guiding and advising individuals and companies, then they should be able to justify why. I'm often shocked at the amount of money spent on consultations and organizational development where the output is minimal. Lots of pretty graphs and flowery words, but very little substance. And I'm truly horrified that there are people out there really with the nerve to run training sessions around emotional or psychological concepts without having any qualification or experience beyond essentially buying the rights to a slide deck. We're talking programs which target individuals' values and identity, emotional regulation, their self-image, communication, and their overall life experience and relationships. And that just isn't something that you play around with. So what do you need to do as a manager? Do your research. Now, if you were to purchase a photocopier, then you compare specs and you speak to experts and you seek evidence. You make sure it does what you need it to do. Now, you won't always go for the cheapest. You'll go for the one that's the best quality and the best for your needs. And when you hire someone, you do your due diligence and you take the time to interview, reflect and assess. Now, when you hire a trainer, you should be doing the same. Don't just read what it says on the label, seek evidence, and anecdotal generalizations is not evidence, it's marketing. So be willing to change the infrastructure based on the diagnosis that you do. There's no point training people with new skills and ideas and then not providing them with the environment to let them actually apply it. And also recognize that environment and culture play a massive role in learning and behavior on a neurological level. So be willing to start from the top and fix the problems in a top-down approach. Running training for people at the bottom won't do anything if the problem is actually systemic. Now make sure you ask questions. Every situation is different and it doesn't always call for a research professor to come in and run a session. But make sure that the person you hire has the necessary skills and experience and they can explain their approach. So don't mistake friendly for effective. 
And there are a number of different questions that you can ask a potential facilitator for your company or a new training vendor. So first of all, I would ask things like, can you explain your professional and educational qualifications on this subject and how they give you authority to advise or guide individuals? Next, you can ask, can you explain how you diagnose my needs and explain why this training program is the best option to address those needs? Another question I'd look at asking is, can you explain specifically what design elements were chosen and why, which will lead to a specific learning outcome? Another question I'd like to encourage is, how will this program lead to long-term benefit and behavioral change? So what behavioral, psychological, or neurological aspects have been considered in the training design? We really need to start questioning whether programs uh, are based on scientific research and whether the facilitator can provide and explain that data. So does the facilitator have professional experience and qualifications in the subject matter, or have they just done an accreditation to be able to sell the program? So can the facilitator explain how the design of the program will lead to return on investment and behavioral change? Can they explain the design aspects which address education, psychology, neuroscience of the learning? And can they explain how their experience and education qualifies them to advise you on your business and its people? So there are a couple of things that you can avoid when assessing training. First of all, one size fits all profiles. Anything that attempts to explain culture, performance or interpersonal connection by assigning a single profile or a label doesn't consider the underlying drivers of human behavior or cultural need. It can be fun, but it can be damaging as it encourages reflection and change, but doesn't consider individual psychological needs or a multitude of other factors present in someone's life. So any program where the facilitator can't clearly explain and provide evidence regarding how the design of the program will drive behavioral change, they should be able to explain the techniques and the approach used in the physical design of the program. If they speak in generalities or are essentially just presenting a slide deck that they purchased, then you're leaving the results to chance. Now, any program where the facilitator can't explain the diagnostic process that they've done to justify why their program is right for your team or your circumstances. So what's the behavior that needs to change? What is the evidence that, uh, that it was successful? What are the KPIs that show progress? And why that program is a solution? And given that there's heaps of options out there to address problems which aren't training. So sometimes a solution is not a training program. Uh, it can be books, support groups, forums, therapy, mentoring. So a lot of different examples. So learning outcomes also that focus on content is another thing to look out for. At the end of this program, participants will be able to uh, at best, it's a short-term outcome. I can get anyone to memorize content and process long enough to do a role play or an assessment. A genuine learning outcome is based on design. What will happen after six months and why and how. Otherwise, it's not a learning outcome. It's content or concepts that will be covered are. Now, at the end of the day, we're talking about people who claim a degree of specialization, they take money and they advise people on actions to take. This is a big responsibility and something that everyone involved with should really be comfortable with. So ask the questions, be willing to be challenged and be willing to walk away. This means uh, an objective review of your current trainers, training vendors as well. So I'm sure that they're lovely people, but do they actually add value? Consider the needs of all the parties involved, choose the best option, and be willing to find an alternative if you're not sure. Learning and education is a specialty, and one that should be supported with professionalism and evidence. So do you want to discuss your needs and options for evidence-based learning solutions for your team? Then contact us today. Our details are on our website at brightertraining.com.au or through any of the usual social media suspects. Thanks again for your time, and good luck with your training in the future.